Today we're going to demonstrate how to install the fascia. So you notice I have a piece of fascia that's bent in an L shape. A lot of times they'll put additional little bends down this just to stiffen it, make it hold its shape a little bit better. So we're going to install this on both sides. We'll have a larger piece that will fit up here on the top that will be shaped kind of like a keystone. So we're going to start with these pieces. They go on first and then this piece overlaps them. So our goal is to get a piece that fits from this corner down to this corner. And you'll notice I've already cut the piece for the left side. Up on the top I have a tab and that tab will allow me to stick this into the key piece at the very end so that you don't see through the crack. Okay, it gives a really nice finish. Down on the bottom end, I've made a notch for it to fit around the boxed soffit here. And to keep this looking nice, we bend a new hem, okay? You can see where the old hem is. I've cut that off, and then I've bent over what's left to form a new hem. So we're going to demonstrate that on the other side. First thing I need to do is mark the piece. So you notice I'm putting it in place, and I'm going right over the top of the drip edge. I can't get under it yet. So I need to have it at exactly the same level as the soffit. You notice I'm going to mark it. And then if you look at that mark, if it's too low, it moves away. If it's too high, it gets too close. So it's got to be right at the level that it's going to be installed at. And then I mark the top. And I want the mark for the top to be right where the bend in the soffit material is. You have to look straight down that bend and make the mark in the right place. Use a square to make your mark all the way across. And remember that this is just the bend line. I need to make a tab that sticks out about an inch past the bend line. So that's the end of my tab. That's where I actually need to cut it. And just like all the tabs previously, we're going to taper it a little bit so that it fits in a little bit easier. So I'm going to make it like so on both sides. This will also get rid of the hem over here, which would be a little bit too thick to fit inside the other piece. I'm making a mark across. This is where my cut's going to be for the bottom end. Now I'm going to go ahead and cut that. You notice how I'm using the snips that will bring this side up and push that side down because we're going to bend that side down. Now I'm going to cut off the original hem because we need to make a new hem. I'm going to just try and follow that edge as closely as possible. What we're trying to do is just score it a couple of times so that it'll be easier to bend. Once we bend it, it'll be easy to break. Okay, so we've got a new cut on it. We're going to bend this over to form our new hem. You want to do it gradually. If you try and do it all at once in one spot, it'll just kink.
you can see that hem isn't really tight yet. I'm going to take a piece of wood and hammer the woods to protect it. And now I've got a nice tight hem. Now I'm going to hold it in place. This is where it's going to be when it's done. And I'm going to check up at the top just to make sure that my mark is in the right place for my tab. Now I'm going to cut the tab on the top end. This piece, remember, just is going to be a backup piece, so I don't need to have it here. That would just get in the way. And now I'm going to cut my tab. My cut needs to end right where I want the bend to be because it's going to bend there no matter what. So I make that cut. I'm going to come back to this side and do the other side of the tab. Make sure you end right at your line. Now I've got to get rid of that radius. I'm going to come back here and cut just a little bit more off because I'm really close to that edge. And then just continue the cut until I meet my previous cut. Now I need to get rid of those scraps. Okay, you'll notice right here this is the hem and I'm going to get rid of it so that my tab is thinner, easier to fit into the other piece. I'm going to grab my hemming tool and put a bend in my tab. Doesn't need to be much, only about 30 degrees. Okay, so those are my two cuts. Now I'm going to hold it back in place. And it's critical that you get this exactly where it's going to be. You notice if, I, if I'm too low, it changes the location of this piece and it will change the distance that my mark is out on the end. So it needs to be in its position when it's actually installed. The best way to do that is to go ahead and install this temporarily. I'm holding the piece in its exact location now. I'm going to make a hole for the screw. You can also use a drill or a punch to make your hole. The hole needs to be centered in the V grooves underneath, otherwise it will push the metal away and not let it rest down on the fascia. that piece temporarily installed, I'm going to lean around the corner and mark the edge of where the subfacia is. Okay, so this piece is going to bend around the corner onto this piece. I'm going to make my line go all the way across, darken it up a little bit. And then I'm going to take snips and I'm going to trim about an inch long. That's how far it's going to bend around the corner. I'll take my hemming tool get right up to the line. 
Make sure when you bend that you hold the metal tight against the hemming tool or it'll have a tendency to give you a round corner. Now it's ready to reinstall. Just like the previous piece, we need to make sure that it goes underneath the drip hitch. And we should have room if we install the drip hitch properly. So it just slides up under. And checking to make sure our length is good. We'll reinstall our screws. Next piece that we're going to install, and this is the last piece, is a keystone piece up here on the top. And you see it has to be wider. It's got to be able to reach all the way up and be covered by the drip edge. So we've got our piece bent. Looks just like the others. And I'm going to come up and mark it. And what I want is I want this to look like a miter. I want it to look like both pieces have the same angle cut on them. And the way to find that, you could get something to measure the angle and then subtract it from 180 and divide by 2 or whatever. But the easiest way i found is to take two scraps. This angle right here should be the same angle right here that we want cut if we were to have a miter on this piece. So you need to get two pieces that are exactly the same width and then put them in the corner. I'm going to put them so that both pieces are right in the corner. And then I'm going to mark where they cross each other, right here. Okay, where those two pieces meet is exactly where the miter would end. If my miter started here and ended here, so that will give us the right angle. Okay, I'm gonna just adjust the angle of my saw until this slot lines up with my two marks. pieces back up, put them in place, and check my angle. You can see it's not quite where it needs to be. So we're going to add probably about a couple of degrees. Notice I cut both pieces at the same time so that I get the exact same angle on both. I'm going to come and check it, and that looks pretty good. So we're going to actually just use this as a pattern to mark our key piece. Now I'm going to hold this key piece for the top in place, and I'm going to transfer the mark where my tabs start on both sides over onto it. So I'm going to make my mark go across so I can see it a little bit better. That's going to be where I cut it. Same thing on the other end. And I'm going to take my pattern that I just made. I'm going to line it up with the bottom edge. And trace the angle onto the front. You can do that on both ends, and then I'll be ready to cut it.
So that piece has the angles cut on it that it needs to fit up on the top. Now we need to mark where to cut it off. So holding this piece right where it's going to be installed, I'm going to make a mark here and here. Show me where to cut it. Now you just connect those marks with a straight line. Be careful when you're working with this not to drag things across the metal because that's a really thin finish and it'll be really easily damaged. So now I need to just cut off those two waste pieces. Using the gasket scraper, I'm going to open that hem up a little bit so that my tabs can slide into it. So now it's ready to slide up there and it'll slide right over that tab that I made up under the drip edge. Okay, this piece is going to have to be taken off and slid into this piece. You can't slide both tabs in at the same time. Okay, we're going to put this piece up here. We're going to take that hem. We've opened up the gap and slide it over the tab on the first piece. Then we're going to lift that up in place. And we're going to take our other piece and we're going to have, probably have somebody help you slide that tab into place. And raise this up. Okay, with all three pieces in place, now we can put some holes here and fasten this keystone piece. I'm going to punch a hole here and put a screw in just to help hold that tight so it doesn't rattle. I'm going to clip this corner off so that it's even with the bottom of my soffit. After this is installed, we've got all of our screws in. We're going to put a couple of staples in this tab that we bent around the corner just to keep it from moving later on.